What's up, folks? Back with another reaction, back with some more Duran Duran. Though, first things first, I wanted to give a big special shout out to Mark or Lloydy as he goes by. Um, he's a vinyl collector like me, and he noticed I was reacting to a lot of Duran Duran tunes, and he took it upon himself to send me a record. He actually sent me a punk rock record, too, so um, there'll be more to the story uh, when I do some more punk rock reactions, but yeah. Um, I just want to give a big thanks to you, Mark. Uh, that's super cool. Um, again, uh, I didn't realize when I started doing these reactions, which on my old channel, which if you don't know the story, earlier this year I had to like start a new YouTube channel after running the old one for like 10 years. But that was like all techno. I was reacting to acid techno and trance and hardcore and so on. Um, so, you know, the viewership for those kind of genres, it's like very small, uh, but I met a few cool people there as well. Uh, but when I started doing reactions to like Depeche Mode and Duran Duran and, you know, Yazoo and Erasure and so on, I've met so many cool people um, through these uh, reactions and just the comment sections below the videos. So, um, again, big ups to Lloydy especially and to all of you who've commented and um, contributed in uh, different ways. So, um, yeah, I really appreciate you all. Um, you know, we're all in this big sort of musical journey together through a number of different catalogs, so big ups to you. Uh, but yeah, this is a, a single uh, vinyl from 1984, uh, and it's Duran Duran's The Reflex, and this is such good timing that it just arrived, uh, because I recently uh, had the pleasure of interacting with Ian Little, uh, who produced songs on Seven and the Ragged Tiger, <clears throat> as well as uh, Izzy sent me, uh, again shout out to you Izzy, uh, sent me an Ian Little mix of Tiger Tiger. So I'm going to get to that one next time, but because I just got this from Lloydy, I wanted to go straight to this one. And what I noticed is that Make Me Smile, parentheses, Come Up and See Me, um, is mixed by Ian Little according to this um, on the entry on Discogs here. So yeah, it's written by Steve Harley uh, and mixed by Ian Little. So I'm curious uh, this I think it's obviously um, a track that is not on the main uh, album. I've reacted to the whole album now. So, um, yeah, it's like a B-side on a single uh, from this same period. Uh, so I'm very interested in this. And again, uh, shout out to Ian Little. I uh, commented on uh, one of the videos I did. And in fact, one of the comments he made uh, was that, you know, when you're you know, checking out the sonics and so on, um, sometimes, you know, gestures can be more expressive than trying to articulate it necessarily uh, in words, and I fully appreciate that. Uh, but what he also said is that it wouldn't be the worst thing, um, you know, to kind of find, like, either the very right moment uh, when it's quieter or just to wait to the end. Um, because, yeah, there were, I guess, some comments uh, during uh, the reaction to the reflex that couldn't quite make out. I completely understand that. Again, we're very low tech here. I do apologize, but you know, like punk rock and acid techno, everything's sort of DIY around these parts, so, um, yeah, bottom line, uh, I will try to find either a very um, appropriate moment or withhold most of my uh, comments till the end, uh, but I have to say, you know, I do often uh, speculate about titles just based on, you know, the implied semantics or the connotations at hand. Uh, make me smile, come up and see me. Um, you know, make me smile, I think, could be interpreted in a number of ways. Um, you know, if you're doing something in an admirable way and you make someone proud, that could make them smile. But, you know, if you do something sweet for someone, you know, whether just as an act of kindness or as an entreaty to, you know, engage in further um, activity, then I think, um, you know, that would be another way to make someone smile. Uh, but come up and see me. I have to say, you know, come up. Typically, it refers going up to a room, whether it be a bedroom, like specifically, or at least, you know, come upstairs is often used in a sort of um, suggestive way. So, when I see the phrase uh, "come up and see me" after the phrase "make me smile," I won't lie; it makes me think of more, let's say, late night or naughty themes. But um, you know, that could have nothing to do with it. We'll have to see. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying. Um, the process of going through the different periods of Duran, and even though I've enjoyed a lot of the stuff they've done in more recent years, I still uh, very much enjoy um, 80s Duran. So this will be interesting, because like I said, um, I recently reacted to um, Seven and the Ragged Tiger, I uh, went through uh, the tracks, but yeah, this is a B-side uh, from a single from the same period, so let's get to it. This is Make Me Smile, uh, Come Up and See Me. Um, by Duran Duran, and as I said, it's mixed by Ian Little. Is this? Is this, the, this is B. Okay.
like austere, like. Let's just forget that happened. <laughs> and it's funny. I was gonna say, you know, sort of an austere opening. The tonal feel is very different at the right tempo.
Uh, yeah, lyrically, I need to listen to that a few more times. It's one of the ones where the sonics are standing out uh, more. Uh, and again, the guitars came across with a lot of power. I didn't really have the right moment to say it, but the bass as well. The bass was popping um, and like really sort of like grooving. Um, so yeah, I enjoyed the, the sonic like arrangement. Um, as I said, you know, there are a couple lines where it seemed to suggest that, you know, we are talking about some sort of like romantic, emotional, intimate engagement, perhaps. Um, but again, you know, with a lot of Duran songs, it takes a few lessons before I get a sense of, you know, maybe what some of the themes at play are. Um, but yeah, sonically that was really cool. And I enjoyed, um, in particular, the transition from that sort of opening austere part, played at the correct tempo. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed the transition from that relatively minimal kind of like um, not suspenseful, but there was a sense of anticipation. It was that sort of like, you know, tranquility before energy, the sort of, you know, contrast often works in a lot of different kinds of music. And oftentimes, um, you know, sometimes there's like metal songs where they start with this really like languid kind of mellow moment. And it's like, okay, well, I'm pretty sure coming down the pike is going to be some intensity. Um, so I had a sense that it would, might like change or shift, but when it did, it was more, um, I don't want to say sudden, you could tell it was about to lead into the next section, um, but it was emphatic, it was forceful, it like really kicked the energy of the tune up to the next level. Um, and then as I said, like the the sonics were so like kind of like powerful and you know, um, grand if you will, uh, that some of the lines um, were sort of obscured, not like sonically, I, if I was really focusing I could have heard them, but you know, when I'm hearing a new piece of music and as I've come to discover the more I've done these reactions, you know, my brain tends to go one way or the other. Um, you know, I tend to start keying in on the, the lyrics and I'm kind of like really focusing and there might be like, you know, a, a cool sonic element that kind of goes past me a little bit because I'm really trying to hear the words and sort of get at the themes of the tune. And other times I'll sort of cue in on the like aural character of some of the sonic elements. And then, like I said, some of the lines might kind of blur their way by um, because like, oh man, listen to the guitar there. Oh, listen to the bass like popping beneath it. Um, so that was more of the latter category, I would say. So once again, shout out to Ian Little, um, not only for uh, or mixing this tune, um, but for producing um, The Reflex, a tune that I'm a huge fan of. Uh, and again, there's a dance remix on here, which I don't know, it says, I think it's mixed by somebody else. It shows on the, um, the vinyl here that it's mixed by Niall Rogers and Jason Corsaro. Um, but yeah, ultimately I know that the original version of The, uh, the Reflex um, that I think Ian was involved in, and yeah, um, other, oh yeah, so it says, oh it does say A, so yeah, apparently he was involved, um, producing the, the dance mix as well, so apologies, I'm still trying to get a sense of the vinyl that I just received in the mail, so, uh, yeah, but once again, shout out to Ian Little, shout out to Izzy, uh, not only for just being awesome and a champion of Duran Duran, and a very cool individual who shares his knowledge and experience, um, including some information that I've seen, like even long-time Duranis are still like, so like, oh wow, I never knew that. Um, so again, big ups to you, Izzy, for all of that, as well as for, um, you know, letting Ian know that I'm reacting to tunes um, during the period where he was um, producing for the band. So yeah, um, yeah, this has been very cool. Let me know what you think of the tune. Once again, big shout out to Lloydie. Uh, really appreciate you sending me the vinyl. Other than that, I will see you next time. Peace.